Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to go over is how to interact or how to do anything basically, but you have to hold down the button in order to do that. So we're going to be using the new 5.1 plus enhanced input system or enhanced action wrappings to do this. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. It's very simple. My example is opening a door. If I go up to it and press E, nothing is going to happen. But if I were to hold E for two seconds, as that's what I've got it set up as, it's now going to open. And if I do the same, hold it for two seconds, it's then going to close. So again, this means we now have to hold down our action wrapping to do what we want to do. So whether that's to interact, to pick something up, to heal, whatever it is, you have to hold your button in order to do it. So this is what we're we'll going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our action mapping. So again, this is now done differently. So what we're going to do is hit control space to open our content browser. Go to content, third person, input, and actions. Now, if you don't have this, so you don't have input actions already created, don't worry, follow along, but just do it somewhere else. So what we're going to do is right click, go to input, and create an input action. And I'm going to name this IA for input action underscore interact. As for me, this is my interact action mapping. Now, whatever it is for you, give it the correct name. And we're going to open it up straight away. There's not much we really need to do in here. But the only thing we do need to change is we want to add in a trigger and then set none to be hold. So you can actually change this to be whatever you want. So whether it's hold, hold and release, pressed, pulse, whatever it is, you can hover over them and see what this is going to do. So what hold does is trigger fires once input has remained actuated for hold time threshold seconds. So that is what I want. Or if you wanted, you could do hold and release. So you have to hold it for that time and then release it. But for me, I'm going to do hold. Then we're going to press the drop down menu here to open up and change what we want. So for me, I'm going to change the hold time threshold to two seconds, and I'm also going to tick its one shot. So what is one shot does is it means this is only going to fire off once after the hold time threshold is reached. So if we hover over it, it says, should this trigger fire only once or every frame once the hold time threshold is met. So unticked means it's going to continually fire off while you are holding down the button after two seconds. So this is all we need to do. So we're going to save that and close it like so. Next, we're going to go back to our input folder here and we want to open up our IMC default, which is our input mapping context. Now, if you don't have this, what you can do is right click, go to input and then create an input mapping context. But I'm going to use the one which we've already got used in our game. So I'm going to open that up straight away. And all we need to do in here is add an action mapping or add a mapping, sorry, and then add in the one we just created. So mine was IA interact like so. Then we're going to set this to be the E key as that's what I want to use for my interaction. But again, this could be any button that you want to use. And we don't need to change anything else in here as we've already set it up inside of our action mapping. So we can save and close that like so. And now we've got our action mapping fully set up and working. So what we want to do now is because I'm doing interact, we want to be able to actually interact. So to do that in a nice and efficient way, we're going to be using blueprint interfaces. So we're going to go back to our content browser and then go to content. I'm going to right click, go to blueprints and create a blueprint interface. And I'm just going to name this one interact interface like so, opening it up straight away. I'm going to then simply name this function interact and that is all we need to do in here. This is a read only blueprint. So we only need to create the function and we're going to use it elsewhere. If you want a bit more of an in-depth explanation on how to use blueprint interfaces and what they are, then make sure to check out my video on screen now and in the link in the description down below to again, fully understand what these are and how they work. But once we've got this, we're gonna close it and open up our character blueprint or wherever it is that you want to do this code. So again, for me, it's interaction. So I'm gonna to go to third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. In here, what I'm gonna do is right click and search for the action mapping we just created. So I named mine interact. So we now have IA interact here. We don't want the interact interface message. We want the input enhanced action events, IA interact like so. And you'll notice we now have triggered, started, ongoing, all of these. We're only gonna be using triggered as again, triggered will fire off after the time hold threshold is completed. So what we can do to test this is just get a print string. Now, if I were to minimize this and hit play, if I had to press E, nothing happens. But if I were to hold E for two seconds, it's gonna print hello, and it's only printing once as we ticked its one shot. So this is all working perfectly for us. 
So I'm going to delete this and get on with the code. What we want to do is to interact, we're going to come out of triggered and get a for each loop with break. The array that we're going to be searching through in this loop is going to be get overlapping actors with the class filter being simply actor. So essentially whatever the player is currently standing on top of we're going to be searching through to see if we can interact with it and if we can interact with it we're going to interact with it. So out of array element of the forage loop we're going to get does implement interface and this is how we're going to be actually checking if we can interact with it. So this interface is going to be our interact interface that we just created a moment ago. Then this returns a boolean return value so if it's true or false so if it does or doesn't so we want to put this into a branch. So we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch with that return value being the condition there and the execution going into the loop body of the for each loop with break. So we're going to be searching through this for every single element in this array here. False meaning we can't interact with it, we don't want to do anything. True meaning we can interact with it, we want to then interact. So we're going to come out of the array element of the for each loop with break and simply get interact or whatever you named the function inside of your blueprint interface. So you'll notice we've got class, interact interface, interact message here. So I'm going to get that one and connect that into true of the branch there. Then I'm also going to come out of this and go into the break of the for each loop and double click these to get some root nodes like so. The reason why I'm going to break of the for each loop is because we've now interacted with something. We don't want to continue searching and interact with more things. We just want to interact with one thing at once. So we'll compile and save that. And that is now our interaction code set up. And it is this easy. So we're going to interact with something after holding the button for two seconds. And if you created this system or this mechanic inside of Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5.0, you'll remember it's not necessarily hard, but it is a much longer process than this. This is a lot more simple and a lot more straightforward, and it makes it a lot better and more efficient for us. Because now all we need to do is just come out of here. We don't need to get delays and check how long the player's been holding it. And if they are still holding it, it's going to do it all for us. But let's close this and now set up what we're going to interact with. And again, for me in this example, it's going to simply be a door. So I'm going to go back to my content browser, right click, create a blueprint, so blueprint class, and create an actor, naming this door BP, opening it up straight away. This is going to be a very simple door. All I'm going to do is add in a static mesh, naming this door, and we're going to add in the door static mesh that comes with the start content like so. What I'm also going to do is add in a door frame just to make it look a little bit better. So I'll get door frame like so. And I'll parent the door to the door frame and then make sure we set that like so. So we have our door frame like this. Then I'm just gonna move the door to be inside of the door frame properly where it should be like this. Then the final thing we need to do in the viewport is add a box collision. So we need to have an area in which the player needs to be in in order to interact with the door. So I'm gonna have mine be about this size. So this is how we're actually going to overlap with the door to be able to be a part of that overlapping actors for each loop we just set up inside of our character blueprints interaction code. So we'll compile and save that and that is now the viewport of our door done so we can now interact with it. But we now need some actual interaction code. So we're going to go to the event graph and we're going to delete these three nodes as we don't need them. And we're going to go to class settings up at the top and you'll notice we have interfaces. What we're going to do is press the add button next to inherited interfaces and search for interact interface or whatever it is that you named it and we're going to add it there and you'll notice on the left we now have our interact function here under interfaces. So let's double click to get that and again we've now got event interact here from interact interface. Very simply all we're going to do out of this is add timeline like so and I'm going to name this open door t for open door timeline and actually before this, sorry, we need to get a flip-flop. So we're going to get a flip-flop with A going into play and B going into reverse. The reason we're doing that is a flip-flop will toggle between the values of A and B. So the first time we go in, it'll be A, then it'll be B, A, B, so on and so forth. Play is going to open the door, reverse is going to close the door. So this allows us to both open and close the door. If we double click our timeline, we can open it up like so. I'm going to set the length to one second as that's how long I want this animation to take place for. Then we're going to add in a track and add a float track, naming this door track. It's very simply like so. On the graph here, I'm going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value of zero. So right at the very beginning. 
and we're going to right click on that and set the key interpolation to auto. Then we're going to right click again on the graph, add key to curve float with a time of 1 or the max length of your timeline and a value of 1. I'm going to press these two buttons here, zoom to fit vertical and horizontal, right click it again and get auto. Then we'll compile and save. Now our timeline is going to go between the values of 0 and 1 over the course of one second with a nice smooth interpolation like so as well. And this is the basics of our door opening animation like so. So play will be open, reverse will be closed. We'll go back to the event graph and we'll set this up. So out of the door track what we're going to do is get a lerp under float there and the door track wants to go into the alpha not a. The values of a and b is going to be our open and closed positions. So a will be closed, b will be open. So if we go to our viewport, we can see when the door is closed, the rotation value on the Z is zero. And the reason why we've got Z is because if we were to rotate it, you'll notice when we're opening and closing, it's the Z value that's changing. So when it's closed, it's zero. In our open position, I want it to be that. It's gonna be minus 110. Now you can choose any position you want and any number you want, but for me, I like to use minus 110. So that's the values I'm gonna be using. So if we go back to our event graph, we can set A to 0, B to minus 110. Now again, you can choose any values that you want for these. Then very simply, all we're going to do is get a reference to our door. Out of this, we're going to set relative rotation, right clicking the new rotation, splitting the structure pin, connecting that into update of the open door timeline, and new rotation Z is going to be the return value of the lerp, like so. X and Y we can leave as 0, unless of course these are different for you on the rotation here but for me they're zero so I'm going to leave them like that here like so. And that is all we need to do to interact with our door and to be able to open and close it. So we'll compile, save and close this and now we've got all the individual components set up so this should work for us. If we're to drag our door into our level like so, press play, we're going to go up to it, press E, nothing is going to happen. If I were to hold E for one second, nothing will happen. If I were to hold E for two seconds, it's going to open the door perfectly like so. And if I hold E for another two seconds once again, it's then going to close perfectly like this. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a system in which we need to hold down our button to be able to interact with our door. So we need to hold down a button to do whatever it is that we want to do. So instead of having to press it or do anything else, we need to hold the button to do anything and we can obviously set up how long we want to hold it for. For me, I set it up as two seconds. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.